should come into the office starting tomorrow. Anytime between 8 and 1, you will see a new face. We have hired a new administrative assistant because Isabel gave us her letter of resignation. Now, Isabel will still be here at least this Thursday and possibly next Thursday. But please call her. Send her a note. Let her know how much we appreciate all that she did. And our new administrative assistant is Lene Cheesebro. Yes, she's related to the guy over there. <laughs> but we have talked through many of the things of a husband and wife working together, and I know many of you know lawyers or doctors who have their wives assist them. We're okay with this. We will work through what needs to be worked through, and I will be the mediator if need be, along with my SPRCT. So, if you have any problems with either one, please let me know. <laughs> I also want you to know that last month we also hired a new maintenance custodian man in Joe Maddie's. So, again, if you see anything that Joe hasn't learned yet because he is in a learning mode, you see me or Joe, he's very open to suggestions. With that said, I think we're up and running with a full staff once again. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. So, her last name was what? <laughs> I'm just trying to do it. Okay. And if we have any problems at all, just who's going to do the dishes, just contact. Okay. Right. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here on this uh, 2020 brand new year is upon us. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited that you're here. My name is Brad. I have the privilege of being the pastor here and leading us kind of into this future that God has ordained for us. So it's exciting. Certainly bringing staff on board, uh, making some new decisions. Uh, that's exciting as we move forward. Speaking of moving forward, it's the first of the month, and usually first of the month, as we know, as tradition has been, we have communion. We have been talking with leadership among ourselves here and say, right, we want to do communion. Communion is meaningful to us and meaningful to a lot of different people. We're also aware that some people are, have serious concerns about COVID, about the flu, about how can we come together and take our mask off and eat and drink and people touching the food and everything else. So it's... We have decided at this time to delay partaking of communion to at least February. Um, I know that's disappointing to some of you. I also believe that, that God uh, has a time and a season for every single thing. He wants us to use our, our He gives us wisdom, our minds to use, uh, to be smart about things. I know we're not all one mind of vaccinations and the seriousness of things. I, I get that. I'm not going to get into political uh, discussions here about that. But I do believe that we can always err on the side of an abundance of caution, of knowing that God has called us to love each other and love our neighbors, to be kind and good to each other. And I don't want to make anyone sick. I don't want anyone to get sick, obviously. So uh, that's what's happening with that. So if you're, where is that? It's, uh, it's still there. God is still present. Um, but we will delay uh, receiving communion, uh, at least not this month. So stay tuned. It's coming soon. You know that after Jesus was born and Herod found out that here was a new king and Herod was incredibly jealous because again, kings at that time, they often referred to as my Lord, right? So he wanted, Herod wanted people to worship him. And here's a new baby being born. He's the king. Oh, wait a minute, I'm the king. So, hey, wise men, can you tell me where he is? Because I want to kill him. And so when word got to Mary about Herod's intentions, Joseph and Mary, and baby Jesus, fled to Egypt for a couple of years, left. Now remember Joseph's job was as a carpenter, right? Not making much money. Mary probably was not employed. How in the world do you have money to suddenly take a trip, you know, around the world with no money? But just so happened that when the wise men came, they brought with them a couple of gifts, and one of them being gold an appropriate gift because they could use that money then for traveling. The wise men brought gifts that were appropriate, that they could use to make a move. As you give gifts this year, trusting that God can use this for ministry, 
as we ourselves make a move, not all the way to Egypt, but... So thank you for your gifts. Thank you for those who sign up and know this is the year I'm going to tithe. This is the year uh, I've raised my tithe limit. This is, I'm going to trust in God. He makes all these promises, right? Trust, you know, try me in this. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour blessings in your life you can't even imagine. What if God means what he says? What if we step on those promises and really begin to trust God? So thank you for those of you who've made that step, and we pray for those of you who are still in the process of figuring all those things out. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for this day you've given to us to rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for your daily provisions you provide in our life, which bring us joy and completeness. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to give back to you a portion meant for you, to your kingdom to be increased, to your word to be spread for moves to be made for people to be helped. God, I thank you for the faithfulness of these people. I ask you to bless them incredibly, bless the gifts that are given. And Lord, we give you thanks for all of it. In the beautiful name of Christ, we pray. Amen. No Sunday school today, so stay put. You can stay put, but bring the offerings as the choir sings. First Sunday of the New Year is often called epiphany. Churchy word. What does it mean? It means basically it's a, it's a revelation or a manifestation. It's Christ revealing himself. To the Christ child, to the Gentile people, Christ came as a baby and he revealed himself. This is God in the flesh. God is still manifesting. God is still epiphing all over the place. God reveals himself through music, through the love of family, through friends, uh, 
God makes himself known through prayer, through his word. Epiphany, that star that the wise men followed. Probably astrologers looked up and studied the patterns and thought, wait a minute, this is, this is a different kind of star. Let's go check this thing out. And I love that about the Magi because they weren't just satisfied. They weren't just, yeah, that's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. Yep. They thought, let's seek this out. Let's check this thing out, see if it's real. You notice in the scripture, we'll hear in a few minutes, that the wise men come to a house and see the child. The wise men probably arrived a couple years after. Because remember, Jesus and his family took off to Egypt for a couple years and came back. A new year. How many people made it up to midnight? Anybody? A couple? I did. Midnight. Yay. Kiss the wife. Good night. <laughs> I made it. That's about it. I'm, I'm, I'm done for. And we got out our new calendars. 2022. For 2021, man, it was a, a rough year for men. 2021 was a lot of changes for me. I got married, a new church, new house, new, new everything. And we thought about that calendar, and boy, we got to write some dates in there. Wonder what's going to happen in the future. And let's plan some vacation time. Let's. And I realized as a pastor, my responsibility is not to fill in all those dates, but to give my calendar to the Lord and say, "Here you go, God." The whole time is yours. Show me where you want me to go. Show me what you want me to do. In order to find out God's direction in life, what we should do and where we should go, he gives us the blessing of prayer. In fact, we get to ask the guy who spoke galaxies into place, the guy who calls stars out by their name. I have trouble remembering (laughs) a few people's names, right? And God is calling stars out by their names. All right, you go over here. Hey, where's uh, Charlie? Uh, That God, that big God cares about you. And he wants to be involved in your life. He wants you to take that new year all in front of you and just give it to him and say, God, where do you want me to go? How can I serve you? Because you've promised us a hope in the future. The blessing of prayer. Let's do that together. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for the year that has passed. We thank you that we live and move in your being. Time is in your hands. So God, we thank you for preserving us through these years. And we stand at the precipice of a brand new year. So God, guide us. Be with us. We don't want to go if you're not going. We don't want to be where you are not. So God, help us through this year. Help us, God, as we sort through our finances. And God, we know that your grace is sufficient and there's, you, you provide the daily bread. We get that. But God, help us in our jobs, our occupations, our retirements, our, all that financial stuff, God, that we oftentimes hold on to ourselves. We give that to you this year. Show us where to allocate money. Show us how we should be spending and saving and earning our money. We pray for those who are sick, God, who this year was a tough year and the sickness is carried over into a new year. We, we speak against this COVID pandemic. We speak against the flu, which has struck down many. God, keep us well and safe. Watch over us, protect us. We pray for those who are traveling and out lost on the road of life, don't know which way they should go. Many people are lost, God, and we know that you came to seek and save that which was lost. So God, help us to also be out looking for people and point them to you, to Jesus. We pray for those without home, without food, without family, without friends. May we be a church that genuinely loves their community. Show us how we can be a part of that, God. We pray for our schools and our businesses. We pray for this church, God, as we prepare to to make a, a move into the future. We pray for our denomination. We pray for every concern that was brought into this room, Lord. And we are all over the place with this. There's all kinds of stuff happening that nobody knows about but you and us. 
So God, we don't want to hang on to these things. We want to give them to you. Forgive us of our sins and and free us for joyful obedience. God, we pray for these things. Thank you for the gift of prayer. And we pray, as Jesus taught his own disciples to pray, by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by the today of roads being traveled, directions that we head out in. To catch that last line of that from reading from Matthew uh, chapter 2 verse 12 where it talks about the wise men again could have gone back the way that they came. They could have gone back to Herod. But they said instead went home by a different route, a different direction. They came one way and then they met Jesus Christ and they left a different way. They went the same direction. They went a completely new path because of their encounter with Jesus Christ. Which reminds me of the great passage from Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Hear the words. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. Let me kind of break this down for us. Sorry. This is what the Lord says. Here, here's, there's kind of three parts here. Here's, here's part one. Stand and look. He says, stand at the crossroads and look. Two different paths here. So just, just stop for a minute. Oftentimes we're going a million miles an hour. We had like film developing in an hour, then film developing in 30 minutes, and film developing in 15 minutes, and now it's instant. We want things quick, quick, quick. I remember waiting for dial-up <laughs> internet service. Now, it should be right up. And if it's not, if it takes two clicks, that's too long. I can't wait that long. I can't. 
People flipping through the internet, man, you got a few seconds. If you don't grab their attention, they're, they're gone. What God is saying here is just, just stop for a second and look. Kind of see where you are. Because sometimes, again, we go through life and we don't just stop and smell the roses. We don't just stop and take it all in. Wow. So check it out, God is saying. Stand in and look. I read that passage and I think back to English literature class. Maybe you've been there. In the great Robert Frost poem, The Road Less Traveled. Right? You remember that one? The first stanza going like, uh, Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood, and I looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. As far as I could look. Where does that road go to? Robert Frost said, long I stood and I looked. I, there's this path, and there's this path. Which one should I go on? Which direction should we go in this? It's a whole new year, a lot of different ways we can go. Which path should we choose? Well, God says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. What are the ancient paths? What are the, the, the old ways? And again, old is often connotated with not good. Old man, old woman, old fogey, old hat, old... That's old, out with the old, in with the new. And yeah, we need to move forward and in the future, but the old, old story is still a really, really good story. And things like communion and baptism and good old singing in church on Sunday and applauding when the pastor finishes. All that stuff is, well, all that stuff is really good. The old stuff is really good. The old teachings of scripture are important. We're taking, taking all that stuff with us. So God says, stand there and look. Ask where the ancient paths are. What did our forefathers do? What the people, again, we just sang about that, with vision. Who built this place? Who are building a new place? Who, what, what about all of that? Ask where the good way is and walk in it. Where's a good way, God? He tells us in Matthew 7, 13, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. There's a thin road, narrow road, a wide road. A lot of people go through the, the wide road. It's just easier. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few people find it. You can get up Sunday morning and you can be the few people nowadays that actually make it to church to worship God. And there's also this really wide path that you can sleep in, you can do a million other things. No, it's so much easier. Keep all your money, do, do, do your own thing, do your own way. But that path eventually leads to destruction. A lot of people go that way. A lot of people make a decision, because I think church and everyone should come to a decision. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? And churches call us to make a decision. God calls us to make a personal decision. So stand and look, but ask and then walk. Ask where the good path is and walk. You gotta move. You can't just stand where we are. You gotta be putting our faith into action. And a lot of it's just, again, we're all at different places. We're climbing up this mountain. We're all different spots on it. And I don't expect you to be here if you're here, but all I ask you and all God asks us is just take the next faithful step. Just get moving. Because churches and people can get sed sedentary. We can just, oh, I'm good right here. Everything's fine. Why, why do we gotta go? That's all a lot of work. It's a lot of hassle. Just, just stay right here. But God says to walk in it. Walk out our faith. Move into it. And lastly, rest or refuse. Walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. Peace and anxiety. We sang a song this morning called Tremble. It says, God, you make the darkness tremble. You know, you, you, make, you, make, you calm our fears within us. 
The things that God does for us gives us that peace that passes understanding. Gives us rest for our souls. Take my yoke upon you is, I'll find rest for your souls. Come to me all who are weary and heavy burden. I will give rest to you. It says, some people said, we will not do that. I'm going to keep my stuff. I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough. I don't need Christianity. That's a crutch. I'm not going to go to church. I can handle everything myself. Don't you want to rest? Don't you want to have peace? Don't you want to just calm all your fears and have the darkness that seems to be engulfing us just break open and flee? Some people refuse to go that way. That great Robert Frost poem ends with this stanza. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It matters which way you choose. Do you choose the path that leads to destruction away from God, or do you literally take the cross walk and walk towards Jesus, the God that promises us a hope and a future and rest for our weary souls, the good old paths. We're kind of like those people of ancient Israel, right? The, the, the Israelites, if you remember that story, they, they stood at a crossroads. They're at a spot, they're out in the wilderness now, and they start thinking, you know what? Man, it was better when we were slaves. Remember that 400 years when we, we, had, we were beaten and we didn't have food? and we, we, That was better than what we are now. I want to go back there. And God is saying, wait a minute, you have a promised land, right? Hope and potential and promises. Yeah, it's going to be kind of scary. There's giants out there. There's some uncertainty what's going to happen. But I'm out there. Do you want to go back to where you were, or do you want to step into the promises of God and move forward in the future? We stand also at a crossroads. God has promised us, here's what I see. This church is alive, vital, healthy, making a difference, changing lives, transforming people. That's available to you. Or you can kind of stay right where you are doing the same old, same old, and you can die a slow but sure death. And many churches are choosing that. But the scary part is in the future. Because what may happen? And we don't have enough money and we don't have enough people. And all this stuff, it's scary. That's what I get that. But you have my promise. You have the, the potential lying there ahead of you. Moses was leading the people. And Moses said, uh, my paraphrase here. All right, guys. Why don't you all just hang out here? I'm going up to Mount Sinai and meet the Lord. The Lord has led us to this spot. I'm going to go up there. He's going to give me ten commandments, right? I'm going to go on for a couple weeks. Don't mess up. I'm coming back. Don't worry. I'll be back here. Don't panic. Stay close to the Lord. I'm coming back with a word from the Lord. He will guide us. So Moses goes up to Mount Sinai to get the ten commandments. And he's gone a couple weeks. He's actually gone 40 days. But after a couple weeks, the people became all impatient. Oh, we don't have anyone to worship. God has deserted us. God has left us, man. Let's head back. You know, Moses is gone. We're never going to see him again. So they said, who's, who's in charge now? Aaron said, well, I'm Moses' brother. I, I guess I'm in charge. They said, make for us an idol, something we can worship. Aaron says, oh, you're right. He's probably not coming back. So sure, bring me all of your gold, and I'll fashion your necklaces and your bracelets and your earrings into this golden calf that we can worship. So for weeks they start worshiping this idol. And Moses comes down off the hill, Mount Sinai, and he sees them worshiping an idol. And he takes the commandments that he has in his hands and drops them to the ground and shatters them. God's probably like, really, Moses? I just gave you those, right? You already broke them already? But Moses is ticked off. So he goes to his brother Aaron and said, Aaron, well, what the heck happened here? I told you I was coming back. I told you to trust in God. And you, you, you got scared and you, you worried and you, you worshiped an idol. Aaron says, and I love this story because I love humor in, in scripture. Aaron says, I don't really know what happened, Moses. 
Because people gave me their earrings and stuff, and their gold, and I threw it in the fire, and out came this golden calf. Moses got like, really? <laughs> You're going with that? You just threw all the gold in the fire, and it formed itself into a calf and came out. That, that, that's your story, Aaron? He says, yeah, I'm sticking to that. That's what we did. The people were scared. We don't know which way that we should go. So God gave them a, a formula. I think he gives us a formula. Here's something, here's a scripture you can remember. I've remembered it for years and years and years. It's kind of my formula for facing the future. I love alliteration. Formula for facing the future. Here's the scripture. It's Deuteronomy 29, 29. What scripture is it? Deuteronomy 29, 29. It has two different parts to it. I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing first and we'll break it apart. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says this. The secret things belong to God. And the things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may obey all the laws of God. The secret things belong to God. So as we're moving into the future, let's remember that. The secret things are things that we don't know about. Things like events of our nation. Things like what's going to happen to our, our families. What's going to happen to my health? Am I going to get sick? Am I going to move again? Is my car going to... I don't know all those uncertainties of life. What's going to happen when we move to Johnstown? What are people... What, what's, what's going to happen? I don't know. That's a secret thing that belongs to God. I don't know those things. My financial success, my, I don't know. Those things all belong to God. They're for him to know, not us. And that's an act of, of mercy. If he knew everything was going to happen to you this coming year, you might say, no, thank you. I don't want to go through all that. It's too hard. So God in his mercy says, don't worry about it. That's a secret thing. That belongs to me. Only I know that. So what does that mean for us? That, it means that don't be obsessed with looking in the future. And some people are, right? Let me get my horoscope, let me get my tarot cards, let me, what's going to happen? I'm, I, and I'm trying to figure something, maybe there's a secret code in scripture. And boy, people try to find that too. Right, God himself said, no one knows when Jesus is coming back, not even Jesus, only God knows when he's coming back. But some people say, well, I know when the world's coming. It's March 13th, it's what, are, really? So you know, you become obsessed with that, trying to tear everything apart and read parts and different things and God is saying don't worry about that that's a secret thing that belongs to God the Bible is not this big jigsaw puzzle to figure out and the second implication there is if, if those secret things belong to God we should not worry about it don't worry about it nothing you can do about it you fret and you worry and you're anxious and stuff and like the Bible says who of you by worry can add one day or one hour to your life it doesn't help you to worry and obsess and what's going to happen my kid's going to, going to pass this test what's going to happen what's going to go on the secret things belong to God the things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may obey the laws of God so the revealed things belong to us. So, am I going to die of cancer? I don't know. That's a secret thing that belongs to God. But the things that have been revealed to me, I'm responsible for that part. I know that if I smoke, my chance of getting lung cancer greatly increased, so I'm going to choose not to smoke because of that reason. That's been revealed to me. I know that. Am I going to die of diabetes and overweight heart disease? I don't know. But it's been revealed to me that if I eat junk garbage in, right, if I, if I eat a lot of salty, fatty foods, I'm going to get overweight and I'm going to get diabetes. And that's been revealed to me. I know that. Am I going to pass this test? I don't know. But God tells me, listen, I'm going to help you, but you got to study. Right? You got to do your part. You got to do the things that you can do, the things that belong to us. What about all these people who are sick and hungry and hurting? What's going to happen to them? I don't know. But God tells us to help them, to, to love them, to take care of them. That's our responsibility. People say, well, but the Bible says to let go and let God. First of all, the Bible doesn't say that. 
But that's kind of an evasion of responsibility. I just, it's all in God's hands. I don't know what's going to happen. No. Some of that's in God's hands. But some things are revealed to us that we should do. How does this apply to our life? What do we take this formula for facing the future? I don't know how my kids are going to turn out. But I know what my responsibility is as a parent. I don't know if people are ultimately going to accept Jesus Christ into their hearts and their lives. But I know my responsibility is to witness to them. What temptations or trials am I going to face in the future? I don't know. Secret thing belongs to God. But my responsibility is to, to, to read scripture, hide it in my heart so I'm prepared against the devil's schemes and lies. We can do our part. We can do our thing. Maybe that should be a formula for facing this new year. As we stand at this crossroads. Some of you have been at the crossroads for about 20 years. We're going to move and build a new church, and we are, and we're not, and it's going to happen, and slow down, and everything else. And believe I know, even now, even now, we're moving at the speed of school. It's just, oh, come on. We we'll look at this, we have to meet over here, and this is back and forth, back and forth. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. When are we going to close? When are we going to move? I don't know. Secret thing belongs to God. What can we do? We can pray, we can be diligent, we can be prepared. God is under no obligation to bless my stuff or to bless your stuff. We often do that. God, here's what I'm doing, God. Come over here and bless this, right? Bless this marriage, bless this job, bless this thing that I'm doing. And God may decide to do that, but he's not obligated to. What if instead we stand and we look at the crossroads and we follow God? Is this the right step? God, is this where you want me to go? God, is this the right step you want me to go? Because if we're walking in God's perfect will for our lives, God's going to bless that. God's in that. God's already there working. So instead of saying, we're going to do our own thing, go our own way, and we're going to you know, just trust leadership or trust people, instead of following Christ, God, here's what we're going to do. Just bless that, God. God may say, uh, fine, I will. Or he may say, no, 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 no. Here's the path I chose for you. Are you going to walk in that path? Are you going to follow the ancient paths of faith and prayer and study? Or are you going to say, no, we don't want that. We're going to do our own thing. Or we're not even going to, we're just going to stay right here. I'm going to dig my heels and I'm not moving any further. God's saying, but I got promises. I got potential. I got things you can do. I glorify my name. And say, no, no, we're, we're good right here. I don't want to move. What kind of people are we going to be? What kind of church are we going to become? My formula for facing the future is the secret things belong to God. But the revealed things belong to us and our children that we may obey the laws of God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. As you stand at the crossroads of a brand new year, a brand new calendar, a brand new opportunity, all that potential and all that stuff behind us, because a lot of times we like to live back there too. I want to tell you today that what happened in the past is in the past. God has forgotten it. It's gone. Don't obsess about it. Don't worry about it. You've confessed it to God. It's been forgiven. What's going to happen in the future, I don't know. What we can do right now as a people is be the best versions of ourselves we can be. I want to be today the best pastor, the best husband, the best father, the best worker, the best person I could be today right now. And my prayer is that tomorrow I'm a little better than I was today. And I'm a little better than I was the day before. Because God is moving us on to perfection. Yeah, we're still going to get anxious, we're still going to worry. But God said, I'm going to be with you. Don't start worshiping other things. Don't worship your money. Don't worship your, all this other stuff. Stop. But I got worried. I got scared. God said, I'm going to be with you. Where you're walking, where you're going, I've already been. My footprints are already there. I love the faith that Joshua had. When he came up to the, to the, to the river, right, to the, and, and he, he's, he's looking at it, and God said, you're going to walk across on dry land here, and th there's water here. And as soon as he put his foot in, psh, until he stepped into that promise, 
I love it when the, 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 the spies went into the promised land. It says they came back carrying a bunch of grapes, but carried on a pole between two men. And I could see the men carrying this pole with, imagine how big those grapes were. That big cluster of grapes. It took two guys to carry that cluster of grapes. I said, there's promise, there's potential. They said, but it's scared, we're scared. We don't want to go, we're scared, we're scared. And we don't have enough money, enough food, enough anything, we're scared. And those people never made it to the promised land. I want that for you. I want to have your hopes and dreams realized. I want us to step into that future and see it. See the possibility, see that preferred future. See the place packed with people and people being saved and people being let go of their addictions and I want that for us. I'm going to be following God, and I hope you are as well. We're going to follow the old paths, right? We're going to see what the good way is and walk in it. And with the future things that belong to God, that's God's part. We do what we can do, God will take care of the rest. A formula for facing the future. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you. You have given us guidance. When we stand with all the stuff behind us and all the future ahead of us, and we don't know which way we should go, you call us and say, here is the way, walk in it. God, forgive us for the times that we've gone our own way, we found our own path. We wandered astray, we wandered outside your will. We don't want to do that. We want to follow you. We want you to be our wisdom. You be the focal point, the author and perfecter of our faith. We want to follow you, God. We want to go to a promised land flowing with goodness, flowing with, with joy and hope. Help us, God, to trust in you, to do the things that have been revealed to us to do. May it be so, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a good word right there. Why don't you stand and sing one more song with me as we close today. been our help in all the ages past, our hope and our help for years to come. May you press into that promise of God. May you walk and not be weary. May you run and not grow faint. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I don't know who holds the future. It's God. And he says, let's go. I got G-O right in my name. Let's go. He's a go God. We're going to move. We're going to move in God's will and God's purpose. May you do the same. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Have a great week, folks. Love you. Peace. Thanks for coming.